So let's begin our discussion on radical reactions and radicals. So what exactly is a radical? Well, a radical is simply a molecule or a compound that contains a single non-bonding electron on one of the atoms in that molecule or compound. For example, let's look at these two examples of radicals. Both of these guys contain a single non-bonding electron in the sp3 hybridized orbitals. In fact, these are named methyl radicals. So what happens if we take these two methyl radicals and we allow these two sp3 hybridized orbitals to overlap? In other words, what happens as these two electrons are pushed closer and closer to one another? Well, two things happen. First of all, these two electrons begin repelling one another, but at the same time, this electron begins to attract to the protons in the nucleus of this atom, and likewise, this electron approaches and is attracted to the protons in this carbon, in this atom. So, we basically have bond formation. So when these two atomic orbitals overlap, we form a molecular orbital known as the sigma carbon-carbon bond. Remember, bond formation is a stabilizing effect. In other words, energy is released because electrons approach or reach the nucleus. They're closer to the nucleus, and that means they're more stable and lower in energy. So whenever we go from radicals to non-radicals, whenever we form this bond, our energy drops because energy is released, and so we have an exothermic reaction. Once again, bond formation is stabilizing, meaning that energy is released as electrons approach the opposing nuclei. Now, let's discuss the reverse process. So notice that if we go from the products back to our reactant, what we're actually doing is we're inputting energy, specifically 90 kilocals per mole of energy, so that this bond is broken, so that these two electrons uh, move away from the nuclei. Remember, how do we pull electrons away from the nuclei? Well, we pull them away by inputting energy, by doing work. And that's exactly what we mean by this process here. We're inputting energy to pull these two electrons away to form our radicals. And this is known as radical formation. So once again, Radical reactions move electrons away from the nuclei. Radical formation reactions. Hence, energy is required during radical reactions. Now, bond association energy is simply the energy required to break a given bond. So different types of bonds have different bond association energies. For this specific bond in ethane, it's, it's 90 kilo, it requires 90 kilocals per mole of this ethane molecule to break uh, those molecules. Now, let's look at the four major different types of radical reactions. Let's begin with the hydrogen abstraction reaction. This is simply when hydrogen, one of the hydrogens in our alkane molecule, is removed along with an electron found on that H molecule. So let's look at this example. Let's look at propane. Propane has three carbon atoms. We have three H's on this side, on this side, and two on this side. Let's suppose we want to abstract or remove the middle H. What happens is we need to input energy. Why? Well, because a bond is being broken. Remember, bond is being broken, so energy is being inputted. We're inputting energy, shown by this delta sign here, the triangle above the arrow. So one electron goes into the H, the second electron goes into the carbon, and we form the following neutral charged uh, radical compound. So once again, we're forming our radicals, so energy is being inputted. This is an endothermic reaction. The second type of radical, radical reaction, known as disproportionation. So this is this happens when one radical abstracts a hydrogen from a second radical 
from the beta position. So what exactly is the beta position? Let's suppose we have the following compound. So we have the following molecule similar to this, but this is a radical. So this carbon is on our alpha position. This H is on the beta position. And this is the carbon, the radical carbon, we're using as a reference point. So what happens is one or a different radical abstracts using this electron, abstracts this H away from this molecule. So this is pulled away, it's plucked away, forming an alkane and this single electron in this uh, alpha-beta bond that is being broken goes onto this uh, position and this guy, this single non-bonding electron forms a pi bond. So whenever we have the disproportionation reaction taking place, we form an alkene and an alkene. Now let's look at the third type. We have the beta cleavage radical reaction. So in this reaction, we have the alpha-beta bond breaks to form an alkene and a radical. So let's look at the following example. Let's suppose we have the same exact molecule as above. And now what happens is this single non-bonding electron on the radical carbon forms a pi bond with this guy here. So this is the alpha-beta uh, alpha -beta bond. It breaks, forming the following uh, pi bond, and this molecule leaves, detaches, forming the radical. So once again, beta cleavage produces an alkene and a radical. What about the fourth type of radical reaction? This is known as dimerization reactions. In these reactions, what we have is what we saw earlier. We have radicals combining their electrons in such a way to form our mutually charged alkanes, as shown here. Let's suppose we have the following methyl and an ethyl ra <coughs> radical. We have these electrons being approaching the nuclei. Energy decreases, energy is released. We have a more stable product with a bond here, and so we have energy that is released from our reaction. So this reaction, or dimerization, is exothermic. 